DMARC stands for Domain-Based Message Authentication Reporting and Conformance. It is an anti-spoofing strategy that allows domain owners to set policies on how others should handle email claiming to come from their domain that may have been spoofed. In other words, quarantine or eject the message if it fails DCAM and SPF, and send back aggregate and forensic reports indicating how your domain is being used. So the way it works is that first, the sending organization publishes a DMARC record to their DNS indicating how they want mail for their domain to be handled based on the results of an SPF and DCAM lookup. And then when someone sends an email from your domain, the receiving server first checks the SPF record of the sender to verify that the message came from an authorized server or gateway. The receiving server then checks DKIM to verify that the public key and private key match if the message has been signed with a DKIM. And then finally, the receiving server, in this case Security Gateway, checks the sending domain's DMARC record for further instructions on what to do with messages that do not properly align with SPF and DKIM. And if the message passes SPF and DKIM, the message can be delivered to the recipient. If the message fails one or both SPF and DKIM, then based on the sending domain's DMARC policy, the message can be rejected or the message can be quarantined. And in addition, domain owners can instruct receiving servers and gateways to send them back reports on how their domain is being used. So the steps to deploy DMARC include first deploying SPF and DKIM, and then publish a DMARC TXT record to DNS, and begin with a policy in your DMARC record explaining what to do with messages that did not fully align with SPF and DKIM. In other words, this can be a policy of none, a policy of quarantine, or a policy of reject. When deploying DMARC at the beginning, standard practice would be to start out with a policy of P equals none so that messages aren't rejected or quarantined based on the results. And this is so that you can make final adjustments to ensure that all legitimate mail coming from your domain is properly aligned with SPF and DKIM. During this time that your policy is set to P equals none, you can then monitor any incoming DMARC reports that are sent in from other mail servers and gateways to review how your domain is being used and to make any adjustments to your server settings or DNS records as needed. Then once you've made additional adjustments and you're ready to start requesting that messages that don't align properly with DKIM and SPF be quarantined, then you can set your DMARC record policy to P equals quarantine. Then the next step would be to implement your quarantine policy in stages by setting a percentage of messages that are handled based on the policy you set. In other words, if you start out with a policy of P equals quarantine and you are still making additional adjustments to ensure that all mail servers and gateways and devices that send mail on behalf of your domain are properly aligning with DKIM and SPF, then you can start with a lower percentage say for example 10% and then gradually increase this percentage as additional adjustments are made. And then finally, after you have spent a bit more time monitoring traffic for your domain using a policy of quarantine, you can then switch to a policy of P equals reject. And again, you could also set the percent tag within your DMARC record to a low percentage and then ramp that up slowly as well. And at the very end, when DMARC is fully configured, you can remove the percent tag so that your DMARC policy applies to all messages for your domain. So when getting started, the first thing to do is publish your DMARC record to DNS. And here's an example of what a DMARC record looks like. All DMARC records begin with a V equals DMARC tag, indicating the protocol version. At this time, they all say V equals DMARC1. And then moving from left to right, in this particular example, we have the P equals tag, which indicates the DMARC policy, which can be none, quarantine, or reject. In this particular case, this record has a policy of reject. There is a percent equals tag that is currently set to 100%. So 100% of messages for this domain are eligible for appropriate actions as designated by the DMARC record. And then we have tags indicating where we want aggregate and forensic reports to be sent. So the RUA tag is where aggregate reports should be sent. 
and the RUF tag is where forensic or failure reports should be sent. So when you're considering your DMARC deployment strategy, it becomes important to specify where you want those reports to be sent using the RUA and RUF tags, and also what percentage of messages for the your domain are treated accordingly to your DMARC record via the P equals tag. And this will allow you to monitor how your domain is being used so that you can make adjustments accordingly. So now that we've gone over the basics, let's go over the DMARC features found in Security Gateway. We'll start with DMARC verification settings, which you'll find under the security menu, under the anti-spoofing submenu, under DMARC verification. And before I go through the options on this screen, notice that you can configure these settings globally or on a per domain basis using the drop down menu in the upper right hand corner as shown here. And it's pretty simple to set up. You'd simply check the first box to enable DMARC verification and reporting. And then you can specify what to do when DMARC verification returns a reject result. In other words, Security Gateway analyzed a message against SPF and DKIM, and then it analyzed the sending domain's DMARC record and found that the message did not align properly with SPF and DKIM. You can then use the options here to refuse the message outright or quarantine the message or accept the message and then optionally tag the message with a series of characters which you can configure your content filter on your mail server to look for to filter those messages accordingly. You can also optionally add a given number of points to the message's spam score. Now the default setting is to select refuse the message. This goes along with the instructions provided by the domain owner when they created their DMARC record and indicated a policy of reject. So by selecting the first option to refuse the message, you are honoring the setting that the domain owner specified in their DMARC record, but you do have the option of quarantining or accepting the message as well. And these same concepts also apply for messages that returned a quarantine result from the sending domain's DMARC policy. And again, the default setting is to quarantine the message, or you can choose to refuse the message accept the message or tag the message and then optionally add a given number of points to the message score. And just like with other features throughout Security Gateway, you can configure exclusions for messages from whitelisted IP addresses, authenticated sessions, or messages from your domain mail servers. And before I talk about the other DMARC settings, DMARC reporting and DMARC settings, let me show you what it looks like in the Security Gateway message logs when a message is quarantined or rejected due to DMARC. So if we go to the message log, we can search the reason menu and select DMARC and click on search. And these are the messages that Security Gateway has rejected due to DMARC. And if we scroll down, in my test environment, all of these messages that were filtered out by DMARC were rejected, but some of them could be quarantined instead again, based on the sending domains policy or how you have your settings configured. But if we double click on one of these, we can see the DMARC process beginning here. Security Gateway looked up the domain example.net, performed a DMARC lookup, found the DMARC policy in DNS, checked to see whether the message aligned with DMARC using SPF and DKIM. DKIM failed verification, and as a result, the message failed DMARC and Security Gateway sent the 550 rejection message and then terminated the SMTP session. So now let's go over the DMARC reporting settings in Security Gateway. And this is where you configure Security Gateway's ability to send DMARC forensic and aggregate reports to those other domains that request them in their DMARC records. So by checking in the first box, you can send DMARC aggregate reports when requested. You can also click on this link here to send those DMARC aggregate reports on demand. And then by checking in this box here, you can also allow Security Gateway to send the DMARC failure or forensic reports, which are sent as incidents occur, unlike the aggregate reports, which are sent at specific scheduled times. You can also email a copy of all reports to the address that you specify here. And then you'll need to enter the DMARC report metadata in the fields below in the bottom half of this screen, including the default domain 
which is the domain that is responsible for the report, which would typically be the domain that you are hosting in Security Gateway. The contact email, which is used if somebody has a problem or question about one of your DMARC reports. You can specify additional contact information, such as a website or any other identifying information to help recipients of your DMARC reports get more helpful information as needed. And then finally, you will need to specify the return path for reports that receive some type of a delivery error and must be bounced back to Security Gateway. If you use no reply at your domain, for example, no reply at example.com, then these messages will not be sent. Now let's talk about the remaining DMARC settings found in Security Gateway. Under the DMARC settings menu, you'll find options for including DKIM canonicalized headers and body content in DMARC failure reports. These settings are disabled by default and may be useful for debugging certain problems, but they could also reveal email content in the process, so they are disabled by default. You also have the option of replacing reserved IPs in DMARC reports with Xs to conceal confidential IP addresses. You can optionally refuse to accept a message if the from header is incompatible with DMARC. Example messages would be messages with multiple from headers or multiple email addresses in a single from header. And this setting is disabled by default because having multiple addresses in a single from header isn't technically a problem, but enabling this setting can help improve the protection offered by DMARC. And the setting is only applied when DMARC verification is enabled. You can insert the precedence bulk header into DMARC report emails, which you can then use to create content filter rules that look for that header and filter them out or re-deliver them to designated addresses accordingly. When the next option is enabled, Security Gateway will include the full DMARC records in the log files when a DMARC lookup is performed. And then the last option allows you to automatically update the public suffix file if it is older than a given number of days. The default is 15. And the URL of the public suffix data source, which is also populated in Security Gateway by default. And this is a little bit more advanced and it's not really something that you will need to spend much time on. The public suffix list is simply a list under which internet users could directly register domain names. In other words, all known public suffixes such as .com, .org, .edu, .co.uk, and so forth. 